Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today I'm going to be sharing 10 things that you should not do when you're playing Coral Island. I hope these tips will help you as you experience the game, which as a reminder is still in early access. So everything in this video is technically subject to change, so please do keep this in mind. But I hope this video can help you learn from some of my mistakes so you can avoid them. Number one is do not buy any furniture until you've fixed up your house at the Carpenters, as you will be unable to place it until the foundation of your house is restored. You will also receive some basic furniture from the upgrade, which happens to be available for purchase at the furniture store. So avoid purchasing something that you're going to get for free before you do the upgrade, like your TV, for example, and save your money for something else. Number two is do not run past the clovers that you spot around the island. These are not there for decoration. You can actually hit them with your hoe and you'll get a variety of items like forageables, wild seeds you can grow, treasures like coffers that you can open at the blacksmiths, and even silver kelp from some of the beach spots. Number three is do not sell or throw out your wild seeds. These seeds will give you a random seasonal crop that you would normally buy at Sam's every season. So it is literally free seeds and they could be as high value as a cauliflower seed, for example. So do not throw them out, do not sell them, grow them, water them, love them. You won't regret it. Number four is do not, I repeat, do not accidentally hit your crops with your pickaxe instead of your watering can. In fact, it's actually a really good idea to place these tools far apart from each other in your tool belt to avoid the mistake of accidentally equipping the wrong tool with your mouse scroll wheel. If you do hit one of your plots with the wrong tool, it will destroy it. So don't make this mistake like I did. As a bonus tip here, do not forget to water the plot directly behind the scarecrow. I've done this so many times, so always check behind your scarecrows and make sure that crop is watered too. Number five is do not bring your tools into the blacksmiths for an upgrade on a Saturday. The shop is closed on Sundays, so if you do this, you would actually have to wait until Monday to retrieve your upgraded tool. Similarly, don't bring in your watering can until after you've watered your crops in the morning that day, or better yet, wait for a rainy day to upgrade it so you don't have to manually water at all. Speaking of tools, number six is don't be discouraged if you forget to bring your sword to the mine. Sometimes I put my sword away in storage when I'm not mining so that I have extra pocket space for other tasks and to collect more forageables to ultimately make more money, especially in early game when your pocket space is smaller. However, I've definitely found myself in the mines without my sword for that reason and not wanting to spend the time to run all the way back and forth before unlocking fast travel. So in early game, if you end up in the mines without your sword, it's okay. You can still break all the crates and barrels simply by dashing through them with the space bar and you can definitely manage to collect materials and descend the levels while avoiding the monsters at least in the higher levels with how the game is currently i've done a few runs with no combat when i've forgotten my sword and i've definitely managed to descend five level increments and collect a ton of materials so it's doable and i also wanted to make a special note that ultimately this game will actually have a no combat mode along with an arachnophobia mode for the mines so if you're not a huge fan of combat definitely look forward to this. Number seven is do not give up on rummaging through the trash cans around town. At first, you might get a lot of trash, but if you keep trying, you can get fish and bugs to donate to the museum or to sell. You can also get compost to make fertilizers, snacks, and forageable items. It is worth it. Plus, you need the trash anyway for crafting. So as another bonus, do not throw out your trash. Keep it. Since you should be collecting plenty of materials across your days, number eight is do not forget to name your chests to keep things organized. Organized. You can do so by interacting with the chest and labeling it however you would like. Then when you stand near the chest, you can actually read exactly which is which. This will come in handy as your collection grows. I personally like to categorize my chest
success based on where I found the materials. So for instance, diving, mining, on the farm, so on. And then I also like to have one as well just for crops when I'm a bit further into the game. But of course you can structure this however you'd like and however makes the most sense to you. Number nine is do not hesitate to use up all of your stamina early in the day once you have completed the first two temple offerings at the lake. Completing the offerings should trigger a cutscene that will hint that the hot springs are partially restored. From here on, once you've depleted your stamina, pay the bathhouse a visit and enjoy the serene environment as your stamina bar replenishes all on its own, free of charge. Afterwards, you can continue on with your day and accomplish even more. And last, but certainly not least, number 10 is super important, okay? Do not ignore the lab upgrades in this game. Once you've completed some diving, you will be able to process the kelp you collect from the ocean with an extractor. You can then bring this processed kelp to Ling's lab along with some money and exchange it for a permanent upgrade to your produce. I suggest going for the upgrade to your seeds first because after doing this, when you purchase your seeds at Sam's, they will all be bronze quality, which will increase your chances of yielding high quality crops without any fertilizer permanently. This is not only helpful for completing one of the early quests where you need a lot of bronze quality fruits and vegetables, but there will also be other quests that need these higher quality items. Plus, you're going to be making more money by selling those high quality crops. Ultimately, you can continue to even further upgrade your seeds along with fruit plants, fruit trees, and animal feed to improve the quality of the products the animals produce. So this is such an amazing feature and it is so unique and I love how it marries diving, farming, and ranching features all together in such a clever, useful, and fun way. So those were 10 things that you should not do when you're playing Coral Island. I hope you learned something new and I hope you found some of these tips useful. Definitely let me know in the comments if you happen to do any of the things I listed here by accident. Be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed this take on tips and tricks for Coral Island. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all and until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Mandy, Meredith, Formotis, Samur, Tansy, Cisco, Tyr, Quinn, Sky, and Whale, my Sunstone members. I love you all and thank you so, so much for your support. It really helps to make all of this possible and means the world to me.